Hey mate, and welcome to Old Mate Adventures. Hi, I'm Kel. And I'm Jed. In 2021, we quit the grind, sold everything and hit the road for a semi-retirement life. Follow us as we trek, camp and hunt our way around Australia and beyond. Say cheese. Cheese. <laughs> no, I'm not doing a cheesy thumbs up. Why not? <laughs> uh, this is our 1988 Viscount Seabreeze, uh, slightly modified. We've been on the road for two years now, and um, yeah, we've done a few modifications even before and after and since we've been on the road. And we thought we'd just have a walk around and uh, show people our home. Yeah, we'll run through a few things on the outside and uh, go through some bits and bobs that we've uh, modified and changed. And then um, we'll show you the inside. Uh, one of the first things we changed on the van when we got it, we only had it for uh, maybe a couple of days and we stripped all the inside. But our original plan and the reason for this van is it's super light. They're a real love and hate van. In the 80s, they were one of the first vans to do like an aluminium uh, sheeting, styrofoam sort of internal insulation with a plywood sort of sandwich board. Not a lot of people liked them because they went away from the aluminium frame, but they made them super light and that was a bonus for a lot of people. So this van originally was just under, uh, its tear was just under a thousand kilos, about 960, I think. So completely empty, it was under a ton, but its payload was another ton. So with registration, it was, um, it's GVM or whatever you want to call it, G, GTM. I can't remember, but it's- Put the right one on the screen. <laughs> the, the gross mass you can tow with this van, it was two ton. So that was the appeal to us because we didn't have to sort of mess around too much with um, getting upgrades and stuff like that, as long as we kept it underneath that two ton, which we have. So anyway, the first modification other than the inside was I wanted to go full independent suspension and upgrade the chassis. The original drawbar came to about here and we added on 600 millimetres, I think, or about 650. So the old drawbar went, we cut all the chassis away other than the original square frame. And then I made a complete new chassis drawbar and restructured where the suspension was gonna fit. Uh, so yeah, that was a bit of a process and we'll go under the van in a minute but, uh, and show you all that sort of stuff. We've done a few modifications since we've been on the road and before. Uh, we don't always carry the swag, but when we do at the moment, this is the best place for it. And we just strap it on the front here. Um, there's not much wing drag where it sits right here. So um, we sit here. But anyway, I'll take this off. Yeah. yeah, big dog. So our old redesign was uh, a little bit on the fly before we traveled uh, for the front end. And now we've, we're on the road for a couple of years, uh, almost 12 months ago, we redesigned the whole front end to suit what we're doing now. Uh, the toolbox has pretty much stayed uh, the same and we just moved it across a little bit. We've got two four and a half kilo gas bottles on the front here. We find two four and a half kilos is better than one nine kilo and also a weight saving if you don't want to carry two nine kilos. And for us, we've only got a gas cooktop and that's pretty much it and the barbecue. So they last for us even on the road full time. I think one does us about two to three months. So we've got a spare, a backup, and we can use that one. We've got an ARC off-road hitch. This has been uh, pretty good so far. This is not. This is the 500 kilo. I think they've got an upgraded one of these. 100% um, worth the money for a good quality hitch. Uh, it's heavy duty. Uh, we can even go up 
a heavy duty if we need to, but we don't have that much weight for it to carry. And even when we had the tow hitch fail on us, not this one, another one, um, this thing here took the whole weight force downward on the caravan skidding across the road and no damage. So, um, so that's been awesome. The hitch is still a ball hitch. Um, everyone goes the cruise master style these days, but we run a towing registered boat trailer as well. So I just didn't want to flick between 50 mil tow balls and different hitches and having carry extras. So this is a newer version of the one we had before that failed on us. I'm not too sure why it failed, but anyway, they sent us a new updated one. This is a three and a half ton towing capacity, this one here. And we found it pretty good. It's all articulated, fits just the standard 50 mil ball. Super easy to fit and install. Uh, it's got a pin, it's got grease nipples, the whole deal, uh, and has been good so far. It hasn't fallen off the car, which is a, um, that's always a bonus, eh? <laughs> uh, we've got the old rod holders. Um, I do have to put some little bits of rubber on here to stop them hitting, but when I've set up all my rods, they always used to lean against the caravan and a bit of a pain in the ass. And I um, don't really want them on the car. So this is good just if you're in a camp spot, got your rods sitting there, you can wash them. Um, yep, good little addition for like 20 bucks. This here was, is our can bag and our wood bag that we use. Uh, it used to be on the rear on um, a tire cover that we had. The tire cover is now on Dad's van and as we have now mounted the tire up underneath the caravan. So yeah, we just decided we'd use this uh, because it's awesome. Uh, p and Canvas Products, Nathan, I think his name is, he's in Perth, um, makes them all. But yeah, we've reused this, made a frame for it. Works great, cans, wood, everything. Uh, we carry a poor man's um, long range fuel tank, which is just 20 litres of diesel. Um, yeah, that's for the price it is. And the uh, uh, application, it's been, we've saved ourselves a few times with this. Eh? Yeah, the old 20 litre Sperry in the back have just pushed us to the next uh, fuel station and got us out of the shit. Uh, that's for boat fuel. If we're doing um, long sort of travels off grid, we carry an extra 20 litre boat fuel. The, the dinghy uses bugger all fuel. And this is the fuel tank for the boat itself. We carry a, just a Rhino box on the front here. I'm not too sure the size. I think it's like 170 litre or something like that. But this carries pretty much all our extra bits for the van. It's got our pop-up ensuite, uh, some wheel chocks and levelers. Uh, we've got our drill for the stabilizing legs. Uh, we've got our shower, which is just a, um, a beach, beach sole shower unit. That's all in there. Uh, clothesline, extra pegs, ground sheet, um, our awning shade is also in there as well. And some more bits and bobs, pegs, uh, the Annie flappers. It's kind of like Mary Poppins bag. Like there's just more and more stuff the more it you think all, about it. Yeah, <laughs> when I had it all, when I was cleaning it all out and cleaned all the sand and everything out of here, there's all this shit and you're thinking, eh. How does that all fit in there? Yeah, it's going to be a mission to fit that back in. But yeah, it always seems to fit. I don't know why, but it's awesome. Everything just fits in there, wicked. Uh, I've got a little light, outside light in there, little LED for night time. Uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to leak or anything like that. Um, yeah, it's great. Great little box. Ah, the barbecue. <laughs> um, this could cause some problems. <laughs> this really splits the crowd, eh? Weber. Yeah, I was a uh, Ziggy man. And uh, for the purpose, we had a Ziggy when we lived in a house, a bigger one. So I just thought, and that was awesome. They're an awesome barbecue. So we bought a, another sm the smaller Ziggy and that has the lid that folds up on itself. So it's a bit more compact and all that sort of thing. Probably really good for caravanners that have got a small void that usually slides into the um, side of the van. But we wanted ours mounted permanently outside. Um, it's always hooked up, ready for roll. And, um, and it sort of cops the elements and the Ziggy, unfortunately, just did not stand the time. Uh, going down some horrendous roads, corrugations, just even rocks and bits and pieces, uh, it just, yeah, it got destroyed. Then there's a few things um, 
I think little bits of design flaws on it. And I'm not going to go right into them, but anyway, it um, it didn't handle the, the test of time. For what we were doing. Yep. Go uh, back into a house, I'd buy another Ziggy, no worries. Maybe. Oh, really? <laughs> well, you know. Uh, so yeah, anyway, we bought a secondhand Weber off a mate, and um, so far it's uh, it's been on here for a year now, and we've done a very similar lap to the year before, up through the Ningaloo coast and all that sort of stuff into Quabba and bits and pieces, and it's um it's been great. Uh, other than the lid not being so tall. Um, yeah, it's pretty good actually. Our wind-wise, way better in the wind. Like I cannot, I, anyone can argue the point, but it's um it's 100% better than wind. We used to the Ziggy used to blow out all the time in the wind. Anyway, that's another whole subject. I'll show you my little um, barbecue contraption. So, it's, oh, our strap broke. Oh, well, that's the strap that has held the barbecue lid down for two years. Have to get another one of them. It stops it vibrating around. Uh, it's pretty much just on a swing out arm. It's pretty simple. I made it, um, yeah, like four years ago. It's just held in with a turnbuckle. I'll just undo that. Then you can just pull it out like that, and it just swivels around. Uh, and if you want a bit more stabilization, I've got a leg underneath, but I think we're on pretty uneven ground. Ah, yep. Just goes like that. Needs a clean. Uh, these little stainless steel trays are from Kaon, I think. Uh, awesome. They're about a hundred bucks, but yeah, it's about five minute install. Uh, you can carry all your tongs, your barbecue cleaners, trays, awesome, stainless steel. So yeah, that's our uh, little Weber, Weber for life, sweet. Gentle. Loves it, loves it. Uh, the awning is just a Carmac one, pretty sure. Anyway, it's one of the good ones. It's uh, It's been really great, um, we put it through some shit and uh, mm -hmm. Yep, it fits awesome. It rolls up just uh, just above the door, so it just misses that. That was more ass than anything. Uh, yeah, and we've got a um, a shade thingy, cloth thingy. Privacy screen. That's it. Uh, we've got one of those, and that goes down. Uh, we put a little the old um, washing line hack. Put that on there. Uh, we have to unpack that and put that in the front box when we're travelling. Uh, it sits over the door. <laughs> yeah, it would hold the door shut. Unfortunately. We've got a step down there, <laughs> which um, which is not working at the moment. Needs a bit of lube, I think. One of the newest mods is just a couple of lights either end of the van. Uh, mainly for this one is for illumination when I'm cooking on the barbecue outside. As we've just got the standard little oyster lighter chucked in when I built the van, LED and that doesn't really cut the mustard. So yeah, we added uh, lights back and front and they switch from LED white to that uh, orange anti-bug sort of scenario. So I've got them on a separate switch and um, so far we haven't really tested it hugely out in the uh, wilderness, but, um, but yeah, I think it'll be a good addition, especially for cooking at the barbecue. We're always hanging a head torch or <laughs> got a phone or something stupid. So um, yeah, yeah gonna make everything a little bit easier. Uh, we've got the vents for the fridge. Uh, my bad, I should have just left them solid and not cut the extra holes out of them. But these are originally for the gas fridges and whatever, for a bit of um, ventilation. We don't have a gas fridge anymore, it's just pure 12 volt. So we have to always tape up these. So that's my next little mod, is just to fill these in, put a bit of alloy checker plate or something a little bit solid on there, uh, just to stop the dust and stuff going in, because we're always taping up these shut and. Bit of a pain in the butt, first world problem, but um, but it's a problem. Uh, the arse end of the van, it's pretty simple. We used to have the spare wheel in the middle, and then on the side, that side, we used to carry the outboard, and it was when we had the older outboard, uh, it, it worked, 
that it was used to get covered in shit and we used to have to cover the whole thing and I was always worried about it getting smashed with stones. Ah, fucking ant in my toe. Fuck off. Heat waves don't protect you from them. No. Uh, yeah, so we had the outboard on the back, which is always, uh, yeah, uh, I never really liked it. So anyway, we changed that all up. We took the spare, uh, put it underneath, and the boat trailer used to just float around in the back of the D-Max, and it was never really secured that well. It used to just be chucked in the back there, and it bounced around and rattled and all sorts of stuff. So now we just mount and redesign the back bumper bar to suit the boat trailer, and it's way better. It's so, so good. It just uses the boat trailer pins to hold it all in there, pins, a couple of straps, Holds it on solid. Number plate raised so you can still see all that. Works great. So on this side of the van, our original water inlet was at the front over there. Uh, I changed all that. Both of our water tanks are up underneath on the rear here. And I virtually just made a really simple uh, bunning setup. So it's just got hose connections, valves, fill individual tanks. Um, and it's super, super simple. And we've got an electric pump that pumps water to where we ever need it. Kitchen, at the front drawer bar, whatever. Oh, uh, that's another thing. We've got a little water tap on the front drawer bar, which is super handy as well. Uh, ideally, it would be good to hook them up so we can hook it up to pressure when we're in like caravan park, but um, we haven't really found it need to be. Need to, because um, we don't have an ensuite. Yeah, we don't have an ensuite and all the other bits and pieces, water using things. So yeah, we find it pretty simple and does the job. Yeah, uh, rolling on that, so I've obviously plug in the power if we need it. Um, the whole van's virtually 12 volt, and we've got uh, like an inverter and everything, but we have got a little battery charger that this 240 charges that, and um, does everything we need to do. This here is external solar, so if we need a little bit more solar with the fold-out blanket, or uh, we're parked under some trees or whatever, we can plug the um, blanket into that which has been super handy, has saved the day a few times. <laughs> uh, this here, I cut a hole in the side of the van because in, <laughs> inside the van... That was so nerve-wracking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, to send it. Uh, inside the van in this void on the other side of the wall is a space that's not used. It's next to the sink. You can't actually physically get to it to any cupboards. Well, it, and it had like an old flip-up lid. That's right. Yeah, it had a flip up weird lid this. like a yeah. like a dungeon. Like a hole. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I changed it and used this void. It actually fits. A, this is a nine kilo gas bottle holder originally, I think from some caravan mob online. But we just use it for all our uh, water hoses, rolled up water hoses. We get them from. Um, Put it on the video, I can't remember. It's, it's an Aussie, yeah, lay flats. Oh. Lay flat. Lay flat no. hoses, is that what it's called? Maybe. Well, mm, I don't know, nah. but they're pretty good. Put it on the screen. Uh, super high quality, poor man pays twice kind of deal. Anyway, that all goes in there, 240 cord, um, surge protector and all that sort of crap, and some fittings for the hose to fill up water tanks and all that sort of gear. Uh, we did have a TV aerial, but we just don't watch that much TV. So, yeah, we don't have it anymore. But I've just left them on there because it fills holes. And I've also forgot to mention on the other side of here, uh, this holds just a couple of beach rods and my crab hook. Also known as the awning hook that got yeah, repurposed. For catching mud crabs. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we don't actually use it that much other than carrying a bit of extra fishing rods and whatever. And a lot of people ask us what this says uh, and can't really read it properly, uh, which I think is funny as, and that's good because people who know, know. People who don't know, ask. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, our van's called the Dreamcatcher. Uh, my mate Timmy painted that for us and uh, did an awesome job. And for the amount of abuse that that thing cops, I really thought the paint would peel and all that sort of stuff, but it is um, it has taken the full force of everything on our whole journey, and is still holding up. I've had to replace the um, the adjusters a couple of times, and we've had to put a little anti-flapper thing for when trucks go past, um, <laughs> because I'm not super confident on the original latches, but so far holds up pretty good. 
And then obviously with aluminium checker plated the bottom half, uh, pretty much because there was a fair few dents on the bottom half and I just wanted to make it a little bit stronger and a little bit more um, uh, rock protectant. And uh, it looks we, cool. What's that? And it looks cool. And it looks cool. Uh, a lot of people use the stone guards and all that sort of stuff. Um, personally, I think they're a waste of money. Um, other people will super argue against that. I think it's more if you've got a wagon, you don't want the rocks bouncing up and hitting the back window of your wagon. But in terms of um, what it does to your van, like we don't go belting along gravel roads at 100 kilometers an hour and just slow and slow and steady steady for us. So um, yeah, we've never had an issue other than wet roads that gets covered in shit. But so do all your stone stompers and your big rock tamers and stuff. So um, yeah, some people love them. Um, personally, I've got better money to spend on other stuff, so yeah. And then on top of the roof, we have uh, three 130 watt solar panels. Uh, that's one upgrade I'd like to do in the future. They're straight out of China panels, nothing fancy. They're like 80 bucks off eBay, and but they've been doing great. They're awesome. Um, we haven't had any issues with them. Uh, they still, I think at the moment, they're still pumping out. They're dirty as hell. They're covered in dust and they'll still pumping out like 17 amps this morning. So um, still going good. Like well good enough for what we want to do but it would be great to be able to put some like off-road living i've got like the slimline thin lightweight panels uh, it'd be good to mount a couple of them up there and save a bit of weight on the um on the rooftop because we actually have to put a aluminium little mm -hmm. stabilizer up there just because there is two panels up the top and um and it adds a bit of weight so when we get a bit of wind and you've got the awning pulling down it's um just a little bit of a backup so yeah, that'd be a good to have, nice to have in the future, upgrade those solar panels on the roof. A bit lighter, maybe just two really big ones instead of um, three small heavy ones. So underneath here, I fitted the Cruise Master XT suspension. Uh, back when I built it, I liaised a lot with Cruise Master. Um, I can't remember his name, but he was a fella that I dealt with and I had to send him all the details of like where the center of my wheels is gonna sit um, how much room I had to travel, all that sort of stuff, the weights. Um, it was quite difficult because we kind of had to guess the weights because there's a whole range of springs, sizes and everything you can choose from. So I had to do some rough calculations and uh, surprisingly I got it pretty much bang on. The van itself is only registered for two ton, but the suspension is rated up to 2.2. It's like a subframe here and um, it joins right up to the front with the drawbar and pulls as one whole unit. Uh, you have to do wheel alignments and everything on the suspension, but yeah, we've had no issues with them at all. It rides uh, really, really nice on gravel, and I'm pretty happy that I went with um, with Cruise Master. They're pretty much the best of the best, and uh, they almost cost me more than the buying the caravan itself. But uh, but yeah, it's a pretty good investment in the long term. Uh, gives us a heap of clearance and lets us uh, have the confidence to know wherever the D-Max will go or the towing vehicle, um, our caravan will have easily enough clearance and um, not really more the approach angle but being that single axle you're going to make sure you've got your departure angle set as well. Don't want to get seen in here, we we'll just clean everything. I have no floors yet because I don't trust you to come in with clean feet. Yeah, I just put dirt everywhere. Excellent. Uh, yeah, this is our um, caravan. It's super nice and compact, um, great for what we want. Total weight is about uh, 1850 and that's fully loaded. Water tanks, extra fuel, food, the whole lot. So for under two tonne, it's, um, it's awesome to tow around. But yeah, when we first got the van, we stripped everything uh, out of the van other than basic framework of cabinetry. Um, I pretty much rebuilt this whole spot where the fridge goes. The one piece that I probably didn't change too much was the couch and the bed area. But um, we took all the cupboards off, uh, redesigned everything here. This cupboard here came to about here. Um, all the bench tops were shitty. We used the original sink and doors and latches where we could. 
This had a big full size oven as the old school caravans used to. So we, are, we took that out and threw that out the window and have redesigned that a little bit. One of our most recent mods is the extra freezer. It's just a little King's 20 litre freezer, uh, fridge freezer if you want, it's at fridge at the moment. And we used to have a little cabinet that you could access in through that way. For the last couple of years on the road, we've only got a 40 litre freezer in the D-Max, which is an angle. And the Bushman fridge we have has only got a little tiny freezer for ice blocks and whatever. Yeah, this came on sale for 189 bucks. Mate sent me the link and um, I never considered a King's fridge, but it fit dimensions wise just. I uh, see I had to open that up about 10 mil, slide it in there and it works. Um, it works great so far. We've had it in here for about a month now, just running. And then the last couple of weeks I installed it. So just made up a slide for it. It just comes out like that. And then you can just access beer if you want. But yeah. And then it's just got a little tabs. Lovely. Works a treat. Also a great little mod is the bin. Um, I'm not too sure where I got it online, but I just searched for double bin, whatever. Um, Kogan, might Trojan, have been. Kogan. Kogan. It's yeah, it might have been from Kogan. Um, came with a free YBS sticker, which is pretty cool. So we changed all the bench tops to new stuff. And one of the other mods we've done since we've been on the road is a little knife block. We've got a paper towel roll holder, uh, which is a handy little addition. We used to just have it sitting on the bench and we had to pack it somewhere. So that stays on it. Sometimes it likes to unroll itself, but it's usually pretty good. The original <laughs> thermometer in there, which is just under 35. So that's a little bit of a nostalgic touch. One of the other things I installed, which eh, it's probably not really worth it, was uh, I did a 12 volt range hood. We mainly use it for the clock and the light. <laughs> it is wicked bench light. Uh, one thing I never bought it for intentionally, um, it has got a fan on it, but um, but I've actually blocked the outlet off for the fan because it was the original one. It's like a chimney and it just uh, rattled to bits and we actually, we never use it. We might do most of our cooking outside. Uh, we might heat up a kettle, you know, for cups of tea and stuff, but, um, and pasta or, pasta or, if, it, or, or if it's and... raining or whatever. So yeah, for our van life, um, we haven't really needed the range hood. Uh, I've got a little Bromic um, two burner gas stove. And it's got a grill. Uh, another thing we don't use is the grill because <laughs> it's shit and um, we use it as storage so it's got all like the toaster and any splatter and that. We obviously have this void here for where the oven was. This is not there so it's a whole heap of storage, bits and pieces, utensils, snack boxes, soda streams, fire extinguisher um, and extra bits and bobs. Uh, we've got a water filter, um, non-pyramid scheme one uh, under here uh, which is we change like once a year um, it's not filtered to the drawbar water but just to the tap here uh, that's for our water pump we all know Kel likes a glass of red so I made this bracket here to hold her wine glass flips upside down get the wine glass slot it in done uh, Kelly redid all these cushions. These are just the original foam underneath here, and Kel just reupholstered all them. And Jed spills uh, fishing rod epoxy all yeah, over the cushions all the time. So that's pretty. It's pretty good. Uh, storing food-wise, we actually have this little tiny cupboard here. Surprisingly, it is like the front box. Hey, yeah. it just stores so much food. It's like long and tall couple of shelves and just stacks up in there and just I think because yeah. it's so small you can stack it up so nothing falls or yeah it just stocks everything yeah. like almost so we have a condiments cupboard next to the fridge and then this is a lot of our food and then a lot of our food storage is along the bottom underneath here uh, so this is just a bit of the 12 volt system um, we've got a Victron energy um, battery monitor system 
Uh, we've got light switches, USBs. I've upgraded the USBs even to, um, to the three amp ones, which is a little bit better. Uh, water tank levels comes up on here. Uh, we've got a light, we've got another 12 volt outlet on the other side. Uh, yeah, our TV power, just so we don't have glowing red lights on the TV all night. And, um, and yeah, another light. So yeah, it's pretty good. And that's just our uh, inside temp and fridge temp, which that one's never- Fridge temp's so off. It's terrible, eh? It's like it never reads properly. And we've had it there for ages and need to get a better um, thing. Uh, the Bushman fridge is 12 volt only. I think it's about 130 litre. It's, um, it's been great. Any fridge of this design um, does freeze up a little bit around the freezer box. That's the way it cools the whole fridge. So the only downfall from this type of fridge is if you're in humid sort of Kimberley conditions and stuff and open and closing the fridge all day, um, that freezer box will slowly um, build up. Yeah, fairly quickly. Fairly quickly, yeah. like at least once a week. Yeah, once a week, you'd have to defrost the whole fridge and that's another whole thing. Great fridge though, um, uses bugger all power, um, has not been off pretty much in nearly four years mm. since we installed it. We had it when we were, building, the when we were building the van and I did all the 12 volt system first, um, got all that sort of set up and then the fridge was already in, Blaine plugged the fridge in and that stayed on for forever. 12 volt TV, uh, it's on a little swivel bracket. It was actually, speaking of Kogan, speaking of Kogan um, it's just on a little <coughs> bracket, so you can do that. Uh, we do take it off for transport, so when we're on the road or whatever, um, yeah. <coughs> this is Kel's job usually. Uh, we've got a 12 volt Milwaukee vacuum cleaner. Here is a navigator, I think it's a back seat organizer or something like that. But anyway, I bought it just as an organizer for our bits and bobs. We've got a few HDMI cables and bits and pieces, uh, spare torch, two way radio, and some bits and pieces that we use quite regularly. Charging cords, yeah, it's pretty handy. It uh, fits in there perfectly. Um, takes up no real weight, but it just gathers a little bit of dust. Uh, underneath the couch here, we've got our 12 volt system. So 12 months ago, we upgraded from, we had 105 amp hour lithium, and it was a lot of the time, it, it worked fine. Uh, the whole system worked okay, but if we got a probably two or three cloudy days, we got into some struggle town. So yeah, we bit the bullet, um, upgraded the system, and now we have a 200 amp hour lithium uh, AllSpark, which is from Off-Road Living. And that's been in there for a bit over 12 months, and yeah, it's been great. Uh, we've got a little Sirocco fan, pretty much the, the go-to industry standard these days. It um, folds up, does all your speeds, and it's got a timer, locks in, great little fan, super quiet. So I store me rods, obviously, on the roof. <laughs> so when I'm building rods on the road, um, this is one I've finished, uh, this is for me. And I've got a couple other up here for customers. And we've got the Hezzer Slayer one in progress at the moment. Oh shit. And yeah, and that's pretty much it. We've got a lot of underbed storage, uh, some little LED reading lights there, and cupboard space. 12 volt connections, um, and that's about it. Uh, but yeah, that's our van. Uh, it's been pretty good for, we've owned it for five years, uh, spent two years rebuilding it, um, finished it off um, when Kel was going through treatment, and, um, and then that's when we decided to do what we're doing now. And for two years, it's been pretty much our home. So uh, we paid four grand for it originally, and it was, uh, in pretty much original sort of shitty mm. condition. The outside was semi-okay, but the inside was pretty rough and um, yeah, needed a lot of work. It was but, um, very 80s. Very, lots of green, Find some green photos. and brown, green and brown. Oh yeah. But yeah, it's been great. Um, a lot of people ask us uh, upgrades and uh, upgrading vans and stuff like that. Uh, for, well, I mean, if you had endless pits of money, it'd be great. Mm. And um, but at the moment, an ensuite would be amazing. Ensuite would but be awesome. But we don't awesome. need it. 
we yeah we're we doing fine without it yeah <laughs> and for the 20 kilos of stuff we carry for the ensuite that we've got outside shower pop-up and we've got like the best pop-up ensuite that we could find um, super easy to set up takes like two minutes and they uh, put the chemical toilet in there got a little pump up shower you're away mm. so with all the extra weight and stuff we'd have to carry if we had an ensuite 100 percent would be unreal to be able to do it but um we kind of like towing it right now. less than two ton um and the camping and the style of living that we do we don't super always need it uh and all up um to this day i haven't kept the exact amount of what it cost us but it's around the 25 grand yeah other than that nothing's really broken hardcore on it other than just little bits and pieces door uh, handle door handle front door handle twice <laughs> um we haven't haven't blown any fuses or anything like that which is great because i wired it all up really yep <laughs> good little home on wheels yeah been great um but yeah that's our van and um anyway if you have any questions about renovating old vans um feel free to flick us an email and i'll try and answer them <laughs> anyway um cheers yeah. and um yeah see you on the road sometime <laughs> Uh, we got a parcel delivered. Uh, this is from Ian, uh, yeah, follow of our channel. He uh, contacted me for the address the other day, so um, I'm intrigued. Let's see what it is. <laughs> uh, it's a shirt and some hats. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, old Mate Adventures. <laughs> that's just the other one is um powered by snakes that is, <laughs> that's wicked it's pretty accurate yep yep uh yeah and uh we got some snakes there which is um big ones and little ones which is <laughs> awesome mini ones are mine yep that's wicked and uh oh yeah there's a sticker and that's their i think that's the youtube channel logo um the bald and the beautiful so that's wicked that'll go on the boat and we've got a shirt here oh, yeah. oh my god look at the back <laughs> 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 pretty awesome. sure that one's for me uh yeah <laughs> that's wicked oh my gosh yeah herring fear kelly more than me. They're pretty safe around you. Oh, that's awesome. And it's got um, our old mate adventures on the front. That's wicked. Oh, cheers, mate. That's a that's that's an awesome parcel. Start the new year off. A couple of hats. Um, yeah, champion. Uh, go check out their YouTube channel too. They do a heap of fishing and and camping and stuff around WA and and, and all over the place. Cheers, mate. Thanks for that. Marvellous. I'm going to put the shirt on now. <laughs> <laughs> Boom. Yeah, right. I'll fear me now. <laughs> <laughs> Wicked. Yeah, it wouldn't That's fit so Kelly good. anyway, so it has to be mine. Uh, I like oversized. Ah. Mm. Then we can share it. Cheers, mate. <laughs>